NASA is giving us a whole new look at what it would be like to land on Mars. The latest video from Perseverance showing the rover hurtling towards the red planet last week. This is video just after Perseverance drops its heat shield, the silver disk there, giving its cameras and guidance systems a view of the Martian surface and us too for the first time. NASA's releasing this video matched with audio from Mission Control describing last Friday's touchdown. Current speed is about 30 meters per second, altitude of about 300 meters off the surface of Mars. So there, a look at the landing itself, what Mission Control calls the sky crane maneuver, top left, showing Perseverance's rocket pack dangling it above the landing site. Bottom left is the rover itself. NASA's releasing this video along with hundreds of new images from the rover's first days on Mars. And to help us understand what we're really seeing in those incredible images, look who's back, Professor Chris Hurd, one of the world's top experts on Mars meteorites. He is a participating scientist in the Mars 2020 mission, the Perseverance mission, and he's back from Edmonton. He's a professor at the University of Alberta there. Good to see you, Professor. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> You're welcome. We were on tenterhooks, weren't we, when last we spoke about what it would look like when we got pictures or video, and now we have. And we're going to look together at, at a number of them. But overall, when you got your first glimpse of, of, the, of what we're seeing, I mean, what was your reaction? Oh, I was I was astounded. I, I didn't even think this was possible to see something like this in such clarity. Really? <laughs> Why is it because of the twenty three camera? I guess the the advanced cameras and the capabilities and the twenty three of them. Yeah, and the video especially that that, that we saw a clip of just there. I mean, it, it's absolutely astounding that we could see that. It, it makes it feel so much more real. And I guess it takes some of the mystery out of those seven minutes of terror that we've talked about. It really does. Well, let's look at that again, because we have that video of the heat shield falling away. Let's pull it up. And then if you just take us through this, what are we seeing for the first time there in this? Well, I mean, the amazing thing here is that we're looking down at Mars. I mean, we're looking at the surface in, in real time, as it were, as the rover is descending. Um, there's the heat shield going off. Uh, it was later located by, by other satellite imagery. Um, and uh, and now we're seeing some features. We're seeing the actual color of Mars. I mean, that's the rusty red color right there. Right there. Uh, we're seeing we're seeing craters. We're seeing you know different shades, and then we start to see uh, uh, some of the features that we've become familiar with as scientists on the team uh, in terms of the uh, because of the mapping that we've done. So just in the upper right there, which uh, what's starting to show up is the edge of this delta, this okay. this place that that tells us that these rocks that tell us that. There was a river flowing into this crater lake. This Jezero crater, the delta this that is, is so yeah. interesting to you. Uh, not only yeah. are we seeing it, I want to pause together because we're seeing it and we're hearing. We are hearing the sound of Mars for the first time. Let's pause and listen to this together. What is that, Professor? <laughs> that's from on the rover itself after it lands, and that's wind blowing across the rover. The, there's a microphone there that's actually picking up the sound of Mars. The sound of Mars, for the very first time. We've not heard that before. Correct. We haven't heard it quite exactly quite like that. that. That's right. So yeah. hearing wind, I mean, we know it's such a harsh, cold world, Mars. What would that wind feel like? Any idea? It would be it would be very faint. I mean, that's that's the thing is, it's, because the atmosphere is only one one hundredth the the pressure of the Earth. It would it would, I mean, assuming you could stand out there without a spacesuit, <laughs> for one thing, which you can't. Uh, but it would feel very faint. But I think I think what all of this does together, is it makes it really we we can put ourselves in the place of the rover. You know, it makes it feel like, like we're coming in on from orbit right down to the surface. You know, if we were looking out of a spacecraft as it was coming down, that's what we would see. And if we were standing on the surface and we had a way to feel or listen to the wind, that's what we would we would hear. That gentle Mars breeze, <laughs> as you say. <laughs> right. I, I can't get over That's an off-the-store-shelf microphone that's attached there, and it's picking up that sound. It's just amazing. Okay, I mentioned that there were hundreds of images. Let's take a look at the first color look we got of Mars. And again, uh, tell me what you see there. 
Well, this is really this is phenomenal because in part because it's it's from an engineering camera, it's from the hazard camera, which which is really meant to sort of help the rover automatically look for hazards, but it's in full color. I mean, that's the beauty of this of of the technology that we have on this rover now. But I mean, you see sort of flattish rocks in the foreground, you see some that are kind of sticking up, and then it, and if you can if you can see in the in the background there's some larger rocks that are kind of sticking up that are dark that have been sculpted by wind we've already sort of noticed that um something called ventifax if you're looking for the terminology there okay. but uh but it's it's something that it, it it's just an indication it, it it sort of confirms you know mars gets eroded by by wind by sand getting kicked up by the wind over thousands or millions of years um and then far off in the distance we can start to see some of the hills and in other images we can actually see the edge of the delta I can see that, yes. And if we bring in again a little bit more video, giving us a panorama here, I think this turns around, or maybe it pushes in there. But again, oh yeah, we, mm -hmm. we see that panorama again. The 23 camera angles giving us views, even though we've seen the surface of Mars before with other rovers, but not quite like this, right? That's right. This is actually from the mast. So the mast has now stood up, and this is these are from cameras on the mast. Uh, Navcam and uh, Mastcam Z, as it's called. And as we pan across, you can see rocks of different sizes and different color. There's lots of discussion in the science team about what that means. And then actually in this, that's coming in here, this is a blast area. So right in the center right here mm -hmm. is from the, the jets, basically obliterating part of a dune right there. And then as we come around, we can see just the lower hills with kind of a sharp top. I think they're just at the top of the screen now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are, is the edge of the, that delta. Okay. So that cliff that we saw coming in from orbit, uh, or from the, sorry, from space, as we're coming in the landing, that we saw that sort of that, that cliff edge, that was, that's what we can see now from where the rover is sitting. From where it is, as it uh, checks yeah. itself out, gets all of its systems ready to go. But when you say yeah. well, there's a lot of preliminary discussion within the scientific community about what this all means, what's some of the early you know, theorizing about this, what you're seeing so far? Well, I mean, there's, it's just intriguing because, you know, every, every rock that a geologist sees, you know, you want to know what it's made out of. <laughs> you want to jump right in there, don't you? Yes. <laughs> That's right. You want to jump right in there. Exactly. Um, and, and, but we have so little information. We just have the images so far. That's okay. the thing. But, but it, uh, so we don't, we don't even really kind of know uh, exactly what kind of rock it is. We have a suspicion that these may be igneous rocks, but even that we're not positive about. Igneous uh, but the rocks? Great thing, what, what would that, yeah, so, sorry, for a non-geologist, what's an igneous first, rock? Uh, rocks that have flowed out on the surface, okay. say by lava, or even been deposited by ash from a volcano. It's something from a volcano, basically. Um, and so, uh, but, but the, but the best is yet to come because we have these instruments that can tell us the chemistry and what minerals are present in the rocks. Uh, and so those have to be tested out and they'll be do, doing that soon. And so we'll start to get some of these insights. And that's all before we really start doing the exploration part of the mission after everything is checked out. Wow. So exciting. I, you know, we're going to just touch base with you from time to time as your work gets underway. It's not getting, you're, you're sort of, as I said, the rover getting getting all set to go, but we're going to be checking in with you uh, through these milestones of your work. It's very exciting to hear you tell us about it and certainly to see it in this way. I have learned something, Professor. They're at the Jet Propulsion Lab, they call this uh, Percy. Is that right? Is Perseverance's nickname Percy? <laughs> I guess it's a nickname, yeah. <laughs> Is it okay if we refer to him in that way? Because I, I don't want to be, sure. you know, unfamiliar with the rover, but uh, Percy's uh, <laughs> off to a great start, it seems to me. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Thanks for the time this okay. morning. You're welcome. Professor Thanks. Chris Hurd from Edmonton today.